Measurements. Measurements everywhere. Hey guys, and welcome back to another random distractions video. As promised, I finally had a chance to try out a few different uh, methods that were suggested uh, to me in regards to setting up the subwoofers in my home theater and also being able to measure them with the measurement microphone. As far as the setup that I use for testing, it includes the Dayton Audio UMM6 in my main listening position. Of course, I did have the calibration file for that microphone in REW and had set the levels at negative 20 dBFS and the Anthem was set to negative 25 during all the tests. The Anthem was also running the beta version of 1.109.164 and I did use the beta version of Arc Genesis, which was version 1.65. I did all the calibrations first, noting the levels in the subs uh, with the SVS app. And when I did the test, I had the microphone in the main listening position and didn't move it uh, while I was switching to the different profiles. So what methods did I calibrate for? Method number one was just to let Anthem do everything. I started with the subs at negative 15 and when it came to running ARC, it told me that they were too loud and so I just reduced uh, by 1 dB at a time until it let me kind of continue. This resulted in my subs being at negative 22 for the left one and negative 24 for the right one. After that was done, I made no additional uh, changes to the curve or anything like that, so left it alone. Method number two was actually using the same uh, results that I got from method number one, uh, but then afterwards adjusting the sub uh, levels through the SVS app. Uh, I did do a 3 dB boost, uh, which ended up being uh, negative 19 on the left and negative 21 on the right, and also did a 6 dB boost, which ended up being negative 16 on the left and negative 18 on the right. Of course, this also didn't have any adjustments to the curve or anything like that. Method number three was actually what I had done when I first uh, tried out the beta version of Arc Genesis, and that was to uh, put each sub at 75 dB in quick measure, uh, which resulted them being in negative 14 for the left and negative 15 for the right. Of course, when I ran Arc, uh, it said that they were too loud, uh, but I did hit the ignore button, which was the first time I had seen that. If you saw that other video, uh, you'll know that I also went back in and boosted the house curve 6 dB, uh, or to the max that it could do, and then plus 3 dB in the deep bass boost. And then I also went in in the GUI and up the, the bass level uh, 6 dB. So yeah, that was, that was really maxed out. Method number four uh, was a suggestion of going into quick measure and each sub, putting each sub at 72 uh, dB. Uh, this resulted in the left one being at negative 19 and the right one being at negative 22. This also uh, gave me a warning during calibration, but I also ignored it. Method number five was going into quick measure and putting each sub at 67 dB. Uh, this resulted in the left one being at negative 24 and the right one being at negative 27. This didn't cause any issues during calibration and everything else was left alone. So once I had all the calibration files, I was ready to do the tests and these are the tests that I did. Test number one was just a standard sweep, uh, which was from 10 hertz uh, to 22 kilohertz. Test number two was doing pick noise uh, through REW and capturing that with the RTA tool. And test number three was something that I kind of wanted to see, you know, real life use, I guess. And the best way or the best idea that I came up with was to use the Dolby Amaze demo. And I would play that while having the RTA tool running and capturing the peaks of the entire thing. However, the very first test that I did was actually removing ARC uh, from the Anthem and setting the subs to negative 15 each, so the left and the right and capturing what that uh, looked like. But just a quick note, uh, to make the graphs easier to look at, I did go to uh, the smoothing option and chose psychoacoustic, uh, which apparently is a simulation of what our ears would hear, uh, so it would make it easier to see all the lines. All right, so let's take a look at REW and see what the measurements show. Okay, so first, without arc. When looking at it this way, there's definitely a big bump in the lower regions. When comparing it to method number one, you can see that the bump is greatly reduced and it does seem to be smoother than without ARC. Uh, this really does show me though why some people feel like the bass goes away after running ARC. 
If you're used to such a big difference in the response, going to a flatter response can definitely make it feel like you're losing something, even though this is a more accurate response. As I mentioned, for method number two, all I did was raise the subs levels 3 dB and then 6 dB. So as you can see, there isn't very much difference, but in the lower regions. Although still not as high as without arc, but it is smoother with a nicer roll off. Let me turn off method number two and turn on method number three, uh, which was my last setting. And to be honest, it doesn't look that great. It's bumpy in the lower regions and not very smooth uh, through the rest of it either. Turning off method number three and turning on method number four, it's also pretty bumpy and not as smooth. Actually, comparing it uh, to method number three to no arc, it's almost similar. So it's kind of like arc didn't EQ or fix the lower portions. And turning off no arc, method number three and four are pretty similar besides one being louder in the lower regions. Finally, going back to no arc, method number one, and now method number five. And this one is actually pretty close to what arc does without me doing anything beforehand. If I turn off no arc, these two are pretty similar, but method, method number one seems a little bit better to me. In the pink noise test, I got very similar results, uh, where with no arc, there is a big bump in the lower region. Method number one is more linear. Method number two has the increases in the lower regions, uh, but the rest of it is pretty much the same as method number one. Methods three and four are bumpy, and method number five being very similar to method number one. As I mentioned for the third test, I wanted to do something that simulated real life use, and the Don't Be Amazed demo, I believe, will do a good consistent job for that. Um, so here it is with no arc. And then I turn on method number one, and there is a difference. In some spots, it's maybe three dBs, but in others, it's like 12 dB difference. With the two versions of method number two, it does seem to close that gap while maintaining the rest of the response the same. With method number three, compared to number one, there is more variety, and this is similar in method number four, but with it being a little less. Method number five, again, is pretty close to what ARC does on its own, with there being some differences uh, from the seven to 10 kilohertz, and then again about after 15 kilohertz. All right, so that's all the tests and the measurements that I have, and I do have an idea of uh, kind of where I wanna go or what I wanna do uh, with my setup, but there's more tests that I wanna run, so I'll leave that for the next video. I did wanna mention that <laughs> while I was working on this video, I had already done a lot of the tests and gotten most of the stuff uh, done, but uh, I received a comment saying that after any change that you make in Arc Genesis or in the GUI or anything else, uh, that you wanna make sure to rerun the phase or auto phase adjustment tool in Arc Genesis. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't do that for these tests. Um, so that's kind of one of the things that I wanna try out uh, when I start uh, you know, settling in on my preferences. Um, so I'll see what that does uh, to the measurements. Before I close out though, I did want to say that I don't know uh, how this will translate to anybody else's room. Uh, this is of course the behavior in my room and with my uh, speakers and you know my setup. So um, I don't know how well it'll translate to anybody else's room. Despite that, it was very interesting to see those results and I'm looking forward to seeing what these next tests will show. Well, that's all I have for this video. I would definitely appreciate a like, of course, on this one. And make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when the next one drops. And until then, I hope you have a good one.